as many of you may know, a lot of my videos on my channel are Google Ads related and very specific towards Google Ads. However, for the last year or so, the majority of my own personal e-commerce business's ad spend has been directed towards Meta or Facebook ads, whatever you want to call them. And as we speak today, a good 75% of my ad spend in total for my company is now over on Meta, simply because it is much easier to scale further and quicker when you compare it to Google ads. Now, this is not a comparison between Meta and Google ads. Google ads are very good, very profitable, but it's a completely different ad platform with two sort of different types of demographics and users. So this video today is going to be how I structure a profitable Facebook ad account and a good step by step way essentially that you can implement into your own Facebook ad account to try and give it a better structure, a better method to help you scale, to test new creatives and things like that. So let's jump into this. It's very simple and it's something that I've been using for a couple of months now. It has really helped me, like I said, not only test new creatives effectively, but also scale as well. Now, the example we're going to be running through today, we're going to take an example business and this business is going to have uh, a handful of sort of best selling products rather than a business that just has one single winner, if you like, because eventually with Facebook, you might have sort of a secondary product or a third product that does well, not necessarily at scale like your bestseller or your winner but you still want a good structure for your other products as well so that is what we're going to be looking at today and that example is essentially how I structure my USA Facebook ad account because I've got a main product and I also have two or three other products that, like I said they do really well not as high sort of spending but the structure is still important to make those other products profitable as well now one sort of early point that I do really want to mention here is never have more than one product in the same campaign. I try this time and time again. I'll have, for example, a product test in CBO. I'll launch so many different products within that CBO. It has never worked out for me. Separating products by campaign really for me is the best way to not necessarily the best way to get results, but it just really does help with scaling. It helps with data management and analysis just to separate each product into their own category or into their own campaign, should I say, because it just is a lot easier just to segment these sort of products and keep them separate and not start jumbling them up with everything else. So the only exception is going to be what I call a middle of funnel and bottom of funnel uh, catalog campaign. I'll touch on that at the end because that's sort of more beneficial, I guess, for businesses that do spend a fair bit on Facebook. And it's sort of a, it is a way to kind of retarget and basically deliver sort of certain ads to people in certain points of the funnel. But that'll be towards the end of the video. Let's jump into point number one. Now, on the ad level or the campaign level, should I say here, uh, we're going to go straight up with a single uh, manual standard campaign. We're not going to be using uh, Advantage Plus Shopping at this stage. This campaign in particular is going to be the sort of testing and, you know, it's going to be the campaign where we're going to be testing not only creatives, but we are going to be testing audiences as well. Now, I had a call earlier today with someone who essentially had, it's quite funny actually, because most people say, I've said it too in the past, only go broad targeting with Facebook. Now, the guy I had a call with earlier, basically he showed me um, an ad set that he had turned off. It had, I think, a two ROAS, and he turned it off because it wasn't a broad ad set. Now, he turned it off because it wasn't a broad ad set, and everyone he was watching and talking to said, you need to be running broads, and that's what I said. I said, why have you turned this off? Because it's clearly working. I believe it was a lookalike audience he was using, about 5% uh, website visitors, I believe. But he was achieving a two row as and he turned it off just because other people essentially were saying use broad targeting. Now, each ad account behaves differently. It's worth testing different things. For my own US business, I really only do use broad. But that's because this ad account is four or five years old. It has thousands. I've had over, you know, I've had over 100,000 orders for this business. That is an immense amount of data for Meta to go off. So... If you're just starting out and you've got a fresher ad account, less than a thousand purchases, for example, lookalike audiences' interests are still a good option just to direct Facebook in the right direction. So 
but we'll get into that in a minute very simple you want a standard cbo campaign you are going to want to be using a broad no interest ad set in there as well because it could work for you but when we start developing other ad sets you are going to start testing um you are going to start testing sorry audiences uh interest audiences lookalikes and things like that when you get down to the audience section once you've selected your country um you're going to be given the option and i believe it's automatically turned on at the moment and that is the advantage plus audiences now this isn't something that works very good in my personal sort of opinion on what i've seen so when you are given this option you want to switch back to the original audience and to begin with you want to be leaving age and gender as the default unless you're a women's clothing brand or something like that you want to be leaving you know age and gender as it is now once we've built this first ad set so it's going to be a broad ad set no interests or anything like that you're going to be moving on to the ad level now a good method I like to stick to is up to five creatives per ad set. I'm actually just going to a good method to stick to is up to five creatives because you don't necessarily need five. I more often than not have at least three, but five sort of the limit just to sort of keep things nice and simple. Now, if you've got five ads within the ad set, you're going to only want to have one variable as the difference. So you might have the same piece of text or copy, same headline, everything like that. But the only difference might be the image or video you're testing. It could be other things as small as the headline of the ad. It could be the same ad five times over, but five different landing pages. Anything like that, but just the one variable. And very simply, it's because if one ad stands out as doing really well compared to the other four, you will know that the reason it's doing well is because of the single variable, for example, image or landing page. And then essentially when you have a new batch of creatives, new videos, images or anything else you want to test, you would simply launch them in a new ad set. Don't start adding new ads to existing ad sets because the likelihood of them getting spend is less than if they were launched in a new ad set and it can often throw Facebook off a bit. So just the way I have done it, like I said, for the last few months, if I've got a batch of new creatives, I'll launch them in a new ad set still within this first testing CBO. Now going back to the audience testing, another good variable to test is the audiences. You might have two ad sets with the five same ads, exactly the same in each ad set, but the only difference can be on the ad set level where for example, you might test these five ads in a broad ad set, but you might test these five ads in a lookalike ad set or an interest based targeting ad set. And again, with audiences, you don't want to have five different interests in a single ad set. One single interest is what you're going to want because if it does well or bad, you'll know that the reason is that specific targeting um, criteria that you have set. Now, a point to touch on here is ABO. Now, people like to use ABOs because it essentially guarantees spend to that ad set. Um, I'm, I used to love this. I used to love ABOs, but more so recently. And something I like to tell myself, if an ad set or an ad is not getting spend, I like to think there is a reason for that and Facebook knows better than we do more than we can ever comprehend on what they believe is going to work and I mean a great example if we just read on here a great example is something that I've seen recently in my ad account so I launched a new image ad in this exact same structure I launched it in a new ad set within this CBO about six weeks ago this new ad set with a new image um it got barely any spend for a you know at least four weeks it got no spend and more to be honest more often than not by that point i would have usually have killed that ad set but i thought i'd leave it on a little bit longer just because i wasn't launching many new creatives at the time so i thought instead of turning that off and sort of limiting uh, my testing ability i'd just leave it on for a little bit longer and thankfully i did because now this particular ad set and this ad is spending a good 80 percent of the total budget of the CBO, which is 1.2K a day. This new ad, like I said, that got no spend for a whole month is now dominating the campaign and performing really well. So don't always be so quick to turn off a creative or an ad set if it's getting no spend. Always give it a fair amount of time. In this case, six weeks is what I gave it. Sometimes you might give it a month, but if it's been a week and it's not getting spend, 
I'd at least give it two weeks, to be honest, but this is just an example that it can take even longer than that. Okay, you've now sorted out your CBO testing campaign, moving on to the second sort of complementary campaign to this, and this is going to be where you start to scale. Now, initially, your budget for this other campaign is going to be less than your testing campaign, unless you're already at the point where you've got five to ten winning post IDs. Now, this is... Um, how, how it works so you have your cbo testing campaign we've just been through that cbo testing campaign is just going to be for a single product if you've got two winning products you might have a cbo testing campaign for uh, each product meaning obviously two separate campaigns therefore you would have two more complementary campaigns one for each of these uh complementary cbos i hope that makes sense if not i'm sure if you leave a comment i might be able to do a better job at explaining it but this new campaign is going to be Advantage Plus Shopping Campaign and this is the campaign you're going to be putting your winning creatives or winning post IDs into. I can't stress enough, you really want to be using the actual post IDs as the ads because you get to keep all the engagement and all the data associated with that ad. Now, one thing you really want to do is go into your audience settings here. You can see I've just took a quick screenshot of here. When you get down to this section of the campaign creation, you'll be greeted with a reporting section. You wanna make sure you define your existing customers here. If you haven't done this, there'll be a little button somewhere around here. It will take you to your ad account settings and you just wanna set up your customers who have purchased over the last 180 days and make sure you tick this button here and set this to 0%. What this essentially is doing, you're restricting Facebook from showing ads in this campaign to people who have already bought from your business the whole goal with this is to acquire new customers and by doing this you're pretty much eliminating every existing customer from seeing one of your ads which when you're focusing on new customer acquisition this really is what you want to be doing now a very very important point here you can see i've highlighted just down below is when you're moving ads from your testing CBO into this sort of scaling CBO, if you want to call it that, a lot of people will just turn their ads off in the testing CBO because they're moving it over to a scale CBO. You really don't want to do that because it's working in the testing CBO. If it's working, there's no point turning it off and there's just no need to do that. I, I can understand the logic why you were turning it off because you're probably thinking, okay, I'm moving it out of this campaign and putting it into its own scaling campaign with other winning ads. It doesn't need to be a part of the testing campaign. Yes, a winning ad in the testing campaign may continue to dominate spend, but at the end of the day, if it's making your business money and giving you a profitable return on ad spend, there's absolutely no reason why you need to be turning a winning ad off in a testing campaign. So very important, if you're gonna take note of anything in this video, take note of that point right there now something i want to touch on is cost cap something that has been uh, a big part of my facebook ads journey this year in particular it's a bit like marmite some people love cost caps some people hate them facebook and meta especially with the election in the us has become very inconsistent um, it has been for the whole year but particularly over the last few months cost caps have allowed me to stable the results within the ad account and essentially just stop days where campaigns are spending their full budget and being very unprofitable if you're at this stage like i said we've only had a few hundred orders cost caps probably aren't best for you because it may limit your ability to scale but i still scale now with cost caps and like i said over a hundred thousand orders within the ad account i would say if you're at the point where you're spending at least a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds a day within facebook that's the sort of point where you should not not necessarily only use cost caps but give them a test at that point um and with scaling as well you can scale the scaling campaign budget if that's doing well but when you've got your testing cbo as well just because it's not a scaling campaign don't feel like you can't increase the budget of that as well and you can see here i use cost caps for my main cbo my main testing cbo i use cost caps even when i'm launching new ads and ad sets within my testing CBO, I'm still going straight in at the moment with cost caps. That might be different next year when things settle down with meta ads, CPMs and things like that. But that, you know, even with new content, new ads, I'm still using cost caps and I also use them on my Advantage Plus scaling campaign. So both campaigns we've talked about in this video, I use cost caps on both of them. I can't emphasize enough, it might not work for you. 
every ad account behaves differently. If you want to test it, go ahead. But you know, if if your average cost per purchase on Meta is fifty pounds, for example, and you go ahead and set a cost cap at twenty pounds, I'm sure a lot of you will know it's not going to spend. You have to be, you have to almost start it high with your cost caps and then gradually bring it down over time. So don't don't if you're using cost caps, don't set anything sort of stupid because it just doesn't make any sense and it simply won't spend. Now, if you're at the stage where you're testing new products, again, if you're launching a new product, I would go ahead with the CBO testing structure again, where you test audiences, different ads, all in different ad sets. But until a new product has become a proven winner and that product is consistently providing you with better results, I wouldn't bother to instantly make a complimentary Advantage Plus campaign when you're launching a new product. Let the testing phase run out, you know, Gather that data, gather a good number of purchases, uh, at least two or three winning ads for a new product. And that's when you consider, you know, launching another complimentary Advantage Plus campaign. So essentially only launch these secondary sort of scaling campaigns for products that really have proven themselves. Um, but yeah, I guess the point is when you're testing a new product, there is, you know, keep it separate from everything else. But, you know, you're not going to make a scaling campaign for a product you're testing because it hasn't proven itself yet. So I hope that also makes sense. This is a quick structure that I've sort of made up here for, let's say your business has two winning products and you're testing three more products at the same time. This is how the ad account would look. You'd have your testing CBO for product number one and you'd also have the Advantage Plus scaling campaign for product number one. For product number two, your second winning product, you'd have the testing CBO and again, the complimentary Advantage Plus campaign. But then you would have three more CBOs, each with each new product you're testing. But notice how you've not got the Advantage Plus campaign for these testing products here, because they haven't proven themselves yet. Only when a product has proven themselves, for example, product number five, you would then start to implement the complimentary campaign. And the only other campaign type that we're talking about and that I'm running now is going to be a middle of funnel and bottom of funnel advantage plus catalog ad. Now, what this essentially is, it's a dynamic carousel ad that is delivered to people on Facebook who are either middle of funnel or bottom of funnel. And Facebook will dynamically deliver ads and the products they're showing based on what they think these customers are most likely going to buy. Now, middle of funnel is, I mean, a great way of sort of easily seeing this, uh, bottom of funnel, sorry, is going to be people who have added to cart in the last 30 days. Middle of funnel are people who have viewed or added to cart in the last 180 days. You want to make sure your Shopify or whatever uh, website host you're using, you want to make sure your catalog is synced with your Facebook account, uh, a constant data feed of your product uh, feed, because that is what Facebook is going to use for this. I'm not going to go in depth on how to build this particular campaign uh, today. I just wanted to get the account structure given to you. But if you want a detailed video on exactly how to um, create and structure and make sure all this is set up properly for the middle and bottom of funnel campaign, uh, just leave a comment down below and I can definitely make a short video on that as well. But this is essentially your retargeting campaign. Now, for the last three years, I've not used a retargeting campaign, but this is something I decided to test because like I said, Meta and Facebook has been so inconsistent this year. I want to sort of be a bit more targeted and actually add an element or a separate method of retargeting rather than the broad campaigns just doing their thing. And it's working really well so far. It's not something you have on a very big budget. It's just sort of a peace of mind knowing that, okay, anyone who's visited your site or added to cart is going to be seeing nice relevant ads and you know, this is a good opportunity within the ads on the ad copy to perhaps offer people a discount, free shipping or anything like that. So that is how I structure a profitable Meta or Facebook ad account. If you've got any questions, drop a comment down below. If you need sort of more one-on-one -on -one help, then please uh, drop me a message on Instagram. But other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.